Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of 1848 Australia from Helmut Oli and Linhard Orgler. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. It's also from GMT Games, of course, part of the 18xx line, beloved line of uh, uh, train company management games. Um, uh, this is uh, GMT, I think, has three entries now, uh, 1848, 1862, and 1846. So, uh, and 1862 is solo-friendly. These are not solo-friendly, uh, but several people do enjoy playing them true solo um, against, uh, you know, playing all, all the companies, all sides. Um, and that's uh, probably what I'll be doing here, or at least learning the rules to play on, on uh, online. So. Anyway, let us take a look at what you get in the box. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so as noted, GMT rates this solo suitability as two out of nine. Uh, complexity though is only a five, so that's, uh, that's pretty encouraging. Um, I've kind of fallen in love with the 18xx series. Um, of course, playing the solo-friendly ones that, I've, that I have, but uh, uh, it's be nice to uh, to explore other options as well. The production on their previous their previous uh, games in the series have been really well done. So uh, we'll see how this one looks. So. First thing you get is you're going to get a sheet of your charters for your various companies. Let me take that off there. Here we have the Queensland Government Railway, the Commonwealth Railways, the Kangaroo, the Federal Territory Railway, the Victorian Railways, South Australian Re South Australian Railway, West Australian Railway, New South Wales Railways, and the Central Australian Railway. So you get, was that, eight cards? Cool. Now we're gonna get our Rules of Play. Rules of Play is surprisingly light at 16 pages, including your tile manifest, so you can count, uh, keep track of what tiles are available. And uh, you know, if you get a used copy, you can check your uh, your uh, component count there. Good uh, GMT, you know, uh, matte finish, uh, paper stock, which is always very appreciated. And then we go into the rules. Great initial setup here. I mean, full color graphics, so on and so forth, showing you how to set up the game. Um, and then the rules. 18xx games are very rules light for the most part. It's just complexity in what the rules can do and when to apply them. And most of them share a common DNA. And so once you learn one, learning another one is pretty easy. So here's your rules. Book, how to play, training gum, stock rounds, so on and so forth. Uh, but there, it's it is full twelve page, uh, excuse me, sixteen page rule book. Um, you know, maybe up through page fifteen is the rules, counting the large graphics though. So a lot less rules than a lot of games. And we're gonna get a GMT you know, the usual coded cardstock uh, reference sheet. This is the private company auction track. These six private companies. And then the revenue track. Now I'm not sure if you're gonna be done with this at one point in the game, because I've not played this one. And then it'll flip over, because if this is a track and this is a track, you can have both tracks usable at the same time. So I'm sure they've got that figured out. Then we have the Bank of England. There's apparently something you can invest in. Basic income, station of companies and receiverships. This is your bank. And it's one-sided in this tracking sheet. Now we've got our cardboard. It's all banded together very neatly. And we'll take a look at some of these tokens here. So you'll notice on the, uh, these are for the different companies. These are their logos. 
as it were. And these are all obviously pre-rounded counters. <laughs> uh, revenue track markers for uh, here on the Bank of England. So these are loans you can take out and then these go on here and track that, I believe, if you take out loans. Maybe, I don't know. No, no, excuse me, no, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. These are the Bank of England uh, markers, debt markers, I believe. And then these are the revenue track markers for the companies to uh, put onto the revenue track. Uh, and then there's the Bank of England revenue track. So the Bank of England is a company that runs in this one, so that's pretty cool. Right. And what's interesting is that they identify these as revenue track markers, right? But they're the same as these, so you're going to end up putting them all together anyway. It's not like they're distinct. All right, and then you've got your train uh, train line hexes that you're going to use throughout the game. You start with yellow, you upgrade to green, then you go to russet. And they get they get worth more points as they go on. These are very thick. They're either punch very easily, but they are very very thick. I don't even see that. But they're very sturdy. And these I think are even thicker than some of the previous ones uh, I've seen. And they share again since these share common DNA. You'll see these numbers seven, nine. You'll sort them by this. All nines are a straight yellow track. All eights are a curve from, you know, a hex to a, I don't know what that would be, a secondary X uh, edge, and so on and so forth. And then the seven is curves. All sevens will curve, you know, right to its hex. So they're numbered, and they sh they share that DNA with all of the uh, 18xx games, which is kind of cool. So you always know that you need a seven. Where's my seven? I need a seven. So on and so forth. So. Uh, but then this don't don't try to sort them in order because uh, these have the stations number five six you know have stations so they get they'll get mixed in because they just add them as they go so anyway it's a lot of stuff you probably don't care about so anyway get your yellow ones now we've got our oh no this one had silver I have not seen that before interesting we have these silver and K I haven't seen K yet either interesting and those of you that play all these kind of games may know these, and I'm just, I'm, I'm ignorant, but I'm just, I'm expressing what I see as I open it. Uh, Tasmania is a uh, destination you can come into. The arrows indicate that trains can come into those ports. More stations, so on and so forth. So, get, uh, get five sheets. It's not really a lot of uh, counters or uh, train hexes. There's 20 per, so it's about 100 you're going to get. I'm curious what these rectangle stations are. Oh, look at this. We've got double branches. I've not seen that either. That's pretty wild. Wow. So it splits. So you can run one track and it... it it just curves like that. There's a double branch without a station. That's pretty interesting. All right, so that one that one's pretty too. So these are the russet sheets. So you get 100, 100 train hexes. And then we've got our map board, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And then we've got markers. For I assume for the bank, they're white markers, and their their the previous marker was white. And then we've got paper money. Everybody's favorite paper money. We've got a band of hundreds. We've got a band of fifties. We've got a band of five hundreds. These are five hundred pounds, obviously, because we're talking United Kingdom money here. We've got our singles. Got our 20s, 5s, 10s, and 2s. What I like to do is actually use, um, I've got some uh, Roxley iron clay poker chips. You're going to get the paper money. you got everything you need to play, but a lot of people will upgrade those to poker chips that they can use because it's a lot easier to just pick up and make change with. But uh, it's good quality money. It's a lot better. It's not, this is not your Monopoly money. This is a very thick, 
that's one that's one two dollar bill so it's pretty thick paper normal not cardstock it's flexible but it's a very very thick weight heavyweight paper and then we've got our stock certificates um president certificate and this one is 20 percent some are 50 some are 30. again the, the games vary uh, we'll take a look at some of these Basically, you have the same thing for each company. You'll have a director certificate and then the additional 10% certificates that can be purchased. That's what we have here. So for Queensland, we've got 20, and then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so then two shares, 20% going on up. So you got the same thing for each company. Yeah, is that a company? Yeah, that's company two. And then you can own shares of the Bank of England as well. So we've got shares of that. And then we've got the private company charters that you can buy. And then, so those are the company share certificates. And I find it interesting that they have these, they're blank on the back. Instead of, you could have an 1848 Australia logo on them. It's interesting that they chose to just print them that way. Um, 1862 was the same way. And then we also got our train cards. And these are the various trains that you'll use to run on those tracks. And your company buys the trains and then they can do, uh, run their routes. So you've got twos, which are the cheapest ones, starting at 100 pounds each. And then you work your way up. And there's fewer as you get up until you get to the very end, which they're permanent and usually are unlimited. Um, but you can buy the various trains and they run different links, so on and so forth. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. All right. So let's take a look at that board real quick. All right. So we're looking at the map for 1848 in Australia. It's only a six panel map. So it folds out pretty well. Uh, it doesn't take up a lot of rooms. It's landscape, which is really nice. Uh, so you're gonna start out here. You got your uh, would normally be the revenue track. It says it's got receivership. But this is uh, uh, share prices. No, excuse me. The other one's a revenue chart. This is for your share price for your companies. Uh, the phase track, the bank pool is where companies that are out of business uh, go and what the bank owns. And then here's your legend, where you can place different tiles and what's located where cities, so on and so forth, value of off board areas, certificate limits, number of players, this is the number of certificates, um, based on the number of companies in receivership, so on and so forth. Here's where the stock, this is where the uh, uh, stock certificates are gonna go. And obviously when it's empty, it's sold out. And then you've got your map. And that's the challenge of all these different games is, where to put your routes. So those hex tiles, those train that, uh, track hex tiles that we saw, um, they're gonna go on the board and go wherever. And you can see that certain of the companies are already, this is their home company, their home base. So when they go on the board, they have to put a token there, I mean a, a hex there first and start their company. So it looks like a very tight board. It's kind of long and narrow. And then Tasmania can be placed in one of these two places, I would assume. You know, all these different ports you can run to, so on and so forth. So that is pretty cool. So that is the board. And we are gonna do a recap of everything you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of 1848 Australia from GMT Games, you are going to get the stack of stock certificates and private company certificates, deck of train cards, the stack of paper money to use in the game, the one bag of white tokens, five sheets. Oh, you're gonna look at that game board that we just looked at. You're gonna get five sheets of 20 train hexes, one sheet of company station markers and revenue track markers. You're gonna get a Bank of England tracking sheet. You're going to get the private company auction track and then the revenue track and the rules of play, 16 page rules of play booklet, and your eight. Did I get it right? Eight. One, two, three. Four, five, 
six, seven, eight. And your eight company charter cards. All in this box. 1848 Australia from GMT Games, designed by Helmut Oli and Linhard Borgler. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!